Hello friends! In a recent video we explored how to draw stuff like menus and ESP hacks internally by hooking DirectX 9. That method has the benefit that it works even if the game is run in full screen, but has the limitation that it only works for DirectX games. So today, as some of you have requested, I will show you how to create an external overlay. This means that we will create a transparent window on top of the game window and draw everything onto that. Obviously, in this case, the game can run OpenGL or any other graphics API, we simply don't care. But there is also a downside. It only works as long as the game is not running in full screen. Borderless windowed or good old windowed are the only options. Enough pre-intro talk, let's tell them what we are all about, Mr. Lopez. Well, you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for recent attacks. That's right, Ty. Let's acquire some knowledge. First, as always, we create a new project. But this time, since we want a window, let's choose Windows Desktop Application. Before we change anything, let's see the default. Have not seen it in quite a while. Okay, we have a blank window with some menu on top. But what we want instead is a completely transparent window which does not handle any input. Instead we want all the input to be registered by the window below, which is the game. Let's rename the title variable and give it a value straight away. The name does not matter because it won't be visible anyways. We know the required size, so no need for that global max load string. We also don't need the class name because we are just gonna use the overlay title instead. Inside the main, we don't need to load the strings anymore since we already set the one we use. Inside the register class function, we do not need icons, so let's set those variables to zero. For menu name and class name, we can just put the overlay title. And last but not least, the background. This one we set to black, like so. We do this because later on, we will set the black to transparent, making the window invisible. This is kind of important to keep in mind, because with that, nothing that we will draw in black will be shown in the overlay. Next up, the init instance function. Here, we instead of create window function, we use the create window ex function. Ex stands for extended, and that's what we need. More specifically, what we need to do is to set the extended style, which is the first parameter in the new function. Here we want to pass topmost. This places the window above all non-topmost windows. Next we pass transparent. This one is a bit more complicated than one might think. It does make sure that clicks should pass through the window, which is good. And it also kind of makes it invisible, but only as long as we don't draw anything onto it, which is not so great. And that is also why we need the last parameter, which is layered. Because with layered window, we can set additional attributes, namely set which color should be the transparency color. We will set that in a minute. Other parameters are the class and window name, and then the not extended style, which we set to pop-up. We do this because pop-ups have no menus. We also need to pass the location of the upper left corner of the window, as well as its width and height. To do this, let's create two new global variables, which will hold the width and height of the game window. Okay, now we can set the layered attribute. Here we go, we set black to transparent. No need to call update window. And one last thing, let's rename the window handle variable and make it another global variable, because we will need it for other things as well. Scrolling down, we have the callback function. This one processes messages sent to our window. We don't need it to handle any commands, so let's remove that. We do need it to handle paint though. But let's come back to that later. The rest is fine. Scrolling further down, we have another callback function. This one is for the default about window. We don't need it at all, so let's remove it. Before we move on to drawing stuff onto our window, there are a few more things we need to take care of. Inside our main, we should get the handle of our target and store it into yet another global variable. Because you guessed it, we will need it in other places as well. But for now, we need it to calculate the width and height of the target window like so. Then inside the main loop, what we can do for style points is 
if the target window gets moved, we move the overlay window accordingly. So let's get the target's dimensions again and now use them to move our window. Okay, now I think we are finally ready to draw some stuff onto our new window. So let's create a new class and call it Paint. You may remember from the other video how this one will go. We need to create a DirectX device and then we will use that device to draw things. So what we need first are member variables. We need the object which creates the device, we need the device itself and we need parameters which will be passed when creating the device. That's enough to create the device, but we also want to draw some text, at the very least. So another variable is needed for storing the pointer to the font. We should also memorize the target window handle as well as its width and height. Should be good enough. Now we need a initialization function. Inside we first need to create our object, some error handling in case things go south. Then we need to set a whole lot of parameters. Some are worth mentioning. We need to set the width and height, the window handle of our overlay and set window to true and a bunch of other variables, which I won't go into. Okay, now we create the device, passing a whole lot of parameters, as you might remember. And afterwards, we can create our font. Again, a lot of parameters. I set the height of the characters to 50, made it bold, and chose Font Family Comic Sans, because best font ever, I guess. All right, on to the next function. Let's create the one which will be called by the callback function. Name is render because that's what it does. Inside a quick error check and clear the surface. Now we are ready to begin the scene. If the target window is foreground window, we want to draw, otherwise not. Here we need a function for drawing stuff, so let's create that one. As parameters, we have the string which will be drawn, the position as well as the color where the color consists of red, green, blue, and the alpha component. Alpha component uh, ranges from zero to 255, I think. Uh, it's pretty much between transparent and completely non-transparent. Anyways, the draw text method needs a pointer to a rectangle. We only need to set the top and left value there. All right, that's that. Now back in the render function, we can call the draw function. I looked up some nice RGB values. And let's position the text somewhere at the top left. Afterwards we call end scene and present the scene. But we are not done with this class yet. We still need the constructors. A default constructor because paint will be another global variable. And the constructor taking handles for both our overlay and the game as well as width and height. Inside we init our member variables and we call the init function we created earlier. Back in the main file, we create the global variable paint object and in the main function, we reassign it by calling the proper constructor. And down in the callback function, if the message is paint, we make it call the render function. That's it friends, let's check out the result. First start the game, then start our overlay. As long as the window is in the foreground, we can see our text and if I move the window, the overlay moves as well even though there is a bit of a delay. As soon as I minimize the game or put it into the background, the text is no longer drawn. Well, that's it, we did it boys. I hope you enjoyed this relatively long video. Until next time friends, talk to you soon.